to get the grand final started off in the bottom left we have the blue celestial player he is mana that he is in the upper right it's a celestial mirror we've been talking about it taking that natural collection array again one of the best if not the best stormgate players in the world right now for aftermath it's parting and Nate, I mean, again, this is how you want to open up, right? You go, you put your Sovereign's Watch, you take the first health camp. But and I, I don't think we're going to see anything that weird on Titan's Causeway, right? It's map one. It's a best of seven finals. You lose the map here. Honestly, like, who really cares, right? You're just getting yourself set up. So play the meta, play the standard game, see how your opponent, like, feel your opponent out. And then maybe you start to do something a little bit different. Maybe you start to get this read on people. But, you know, even as I say that, we're not seeing that creeping from parting as much. Yes, you know, he's he taking some damage. He's taking the speed camp, but he's already playing this game. He, I think he's taking a proxy set or a proxy third collection or a bottom right, playing this very differently from any other Celestial player we've seen in this matchup. Yeah, and I think I think the blue, I think that is mana. So we've seen him play very uh, proxy economy throughout almost all of the games that we've had out of him too, which is which has been fun to note. And I think I think what's really interesting about this again is while we talk about how in the early stages of any game, re realistically, it's one month, right? It's been one month since Stormgate early access, so you've only had so much time, and so many things have changed people stick to what's tried and true what works on the ladder and that that kind of shapes the opinion or the perspective but these are both people that are that take a really cerebral approach to the game and figuring out you know the little things that they can for better lack of better words abuse or really try to own in on and use that and leverage it against the opponent for the win so i'm hoping that we still see a little bit of that maybe something wild we haven't maybe considered but that being said, uh, seeing seeing mana play for the stretched economy early on, he's he's kind of already giving himself space if this game gets uh, wild later on. Yeah, I also think it's really interesting. So I talk I, I talk to a decent amount of, of high level Stormgate players. You know, they're they're pretty cool people. And I was talking to them about you know Celestial and how how the race is the faction's feeling right now. And parting his they're saying, look, Mana is a great macro. Look, parting's great, right? He's got these timings. He's got these builds. Yeah, there's a reason he's got like three accounts in the top 10 like five in the top 20 but mana is the best macro celestial player in the game he understands how to power this macro engine in a way that parting apparently is not quite as good at to the point where apparently at that ewc tournament parting was complaining about how yeah you know celestial needs some macro help it's not very good right now and he turns to mana and says hey look back me up here mana is this true and mana's like yeah we got issues but it's not macro like our macro is fine it's pretty good so now <laughs> it's interesting seeing this come true in this setup we have mana again playing that more macro opening taking that quick third base it's a more aggressive setup from parting it's double collection array taking the speed camp so defensive macro play versus crazy aggressive play on times causeway probably more for the aggressive player but on a best of seven i'm really excited to see how this thing is going to play out yeah, it, it, the way that mana has constructed his his infrastructure he he is playing his spawn his main is that bottom center base so it's more or less the least accessible one for a parting and he is going to go up into that main the, the collection array is there with a single prism but it's it's so bizarre he's diving inside of parting's base at the same time we see the argents immediately begin to trade the sovereign's watch is running in parting's natural but for for the main base or you know the originals the starting base of mana there's not too much for him to really kill so he's, he's just going to give this up and not choose not to contest it just yet he has more forces in that new base in the bottom middle holding it down instead yeah the problem is he does lose a prism as well it's like okay maybe the collection array doesn't die but you can run the prism away fine like that's great that's exactly what you want to do so for now mana he's gonna go try to intercept these Argent. gets one that's just leading a little bit here and if he can get a couple more again so Argent fights are weird they're hard to read because on the one hand it's you know more units beat less units nate absolutely but also it's more energy beats less energy so you want those empowered shots so you want to go make sure that you have they're not always the easiest thing to figure out, but the end of the day, the story here is Mana was caught on the other side of the map. He went for this greedy opening and now he's lost his first collection array. So despite everything, Mana is the one that, well, the economies are equal, I guess is a better way to say that. Mana doesn't, he gets a little bit of a lead. We saw that supply lead slightly, but it goes away and he doesn't really get the benefit of this early greed. 
Yeah, it, it, it turns into a very bizarre situation. He's got another huge push up here. I was going to say, Parting has a lot of prisms as well, so being able to hold on to that is one of the things that keeps that economy in a good place for him, bringing his Argents back. And, man, focusing focusing down a prism, it looks like, but he's trying to body block him and prevent his Argents from even being able to leave Parting's base or at least try to slowly trickle them out. There you go, repositions the wall. He blows the door open and continues to back off, but it's like you were saying, it's not just the same units, but they that energy is such a crucial factor too, and... For mana, those, those batteries are not, those power banks are not charging him. No, they're not. He was targeting down the collection, right? Trying to, you know, say, look, party, you got one of mine. I'll take one of yours. I'll still be up one. That's great. Problem was, parting was at green energy, so there's HP regen on these structures, and they were not dying all that quickly. Bonnet did a great, or parting did a great job of just punishing that. All those power batteries, so many of them surged up. All that, just again, the healing from the arc ship, all that put together means that Mana was really going to struggle to go and, and make that fight work out for him. But he does have this healing camp now, and that is going to work out fairly nice for him. Again, we talked about the power and how much how much damage these Argents can do. But also, you know, maybe you do less damage, but if you take less damage too effectively with this healing, that can work out fairly nice. Another Sovereign's Watch goes down now. No healing again coming out of these structures, but that doesn't matter. Mana's not really targeting that down right now. He's just trying to find this concave. And for the moment, it kind of seems like it's working out for him. Yeah, the, I mean, the nice part for mana, like you said, just having any sort of passive regeneration that doesn't cost a resource at this point is something that he's he's going to be really happy to have. The camp <laughs> on the west side wasn't taken, but the Ark ship showing up now and... He's not giving up on this. He seems pretty committed that this has to be the way to make it reach its conclusion. There's still a little bit more power on the banks further deep inside of Parting's base, though, so we can continue to retreat. And now we're seeing the Blast Node come into play. And at least forcing that counter micro is going to make taking these shots tougher and tougher. I think Mana's push is starting to run a little bit out of steam. Actually, two of the Argents get caught by the respawning health camp. They're stuck. Uh -oh. oh, no. That was the entire point of Mana's push, right? I'm going to hold the health <laughs> camp. You can't defend it. And as soon as that health camp goes down, it's a problem. And by the way, Parting went to tier two very quickly. Purify is so important in these Argent fights. Getting that ability to go and just instantly take the creep camp is so important. So Mana goes, he senses victory. He's like, I gotta run in. And then immediately the creep camp respawns. And that is not all that great for him. And again, there's no arc, there's no arc station. He does not have Purify. He doesn't have something that can go and give him a bunch of power back to his units that goes and removes a bunch of energy from his opponent's units that's not on the table so it means the next fight that mana looks to take not only is he gonna have less argents right now he's not gonna have that big power battery on top of everything and these harshness of parting are just gonna be that much stronger yeah, Parting also has photo restoration as well for the Argent, so he's got a little bit more micro capabilities, but also just the energy in general is going to become less and less of a factor uh, as these battles drag on because you've you've aptly pointed it out, Theomulf, but Mana, he's he's taking camps and dumping all of his resources into this push, but there's, there's not the investment behind it into further tech. There's not the commitment to other bases or expansions. It is just trying to make this push work in this game, and it feels like it is continuing to just run out of steam. Yeah, at a certain point, parting, he realized that, yeah, I just, look, I have to hold on here. So, yes, he got the healing camp. Fantastic. Uh, I have an arc ship or an arc station at this point that's getting a ton of energy back. I have I have a bunch of healing cells that I can drop on my units. Is it as good as a healing camp? No. But all these power batteries mean that my units, yeah, they may take a little more damage, but they're going to do so much more damage in these prolonged fights. Again, purify as well on top of this. Mon is now trying to push Boom. it, but at this point, I just don't think... Yeah, it's not going to happen. Parting, he finds the opening, holds on well enough. The blast nodes were super clutch was cool. Well. It did not work, Nate. Yeah, if if anything, if, if you have a takeaway from watching Mana play today, it's that as a Celestial, you really can just send your prisms to a lot of random places. Your opponent will just never find them. So have fun with that. You know, live live your best life and have, have a good time with it. But that's... <laughs> That's something that I've learned that I've learned here from him. It's been super fun to watch. I think I think they the colors swapped going into this one. So parting in uh, the blue on the bottom and mana in the red on the top um, as they both move out. And of course, this this is the map where the, the first camp choice is pretty obvious too. Oh yeah. Also, again, small optimi optimizations though, right? So we see that in Morph Core that you get at the start of the game. It does a little damage to ground. It's not a ton, but it does some. So you go, you make sure that that it, you know you optimize the damage. Morph Core gets very low. And then you take your collection array, and once the collection array gets started, you drop Sovereign's Watch. And it's just the minor, minor efficiencies that mean that instead of taking five of the six, or four of the six creeps, you get five of the six creeps. And you get that 20 more Luminite, which may not sound like a lot, 
but it speeds up your second creation chamber by that much more. And at these high levels, again, parting three accounts in the top 10 a ladder, very, very good mana as well. Those tiny little adaptations, those tiny little efficiencies can turn into much bigger advantages at five minutes, at 10 minutes as the macro continues to grow and they continue to get bigger on the map. Yeah, and, and these little decisions that they make too, right? We have the low ground power bank and creation chamber for mana. He wants to have that that position for their production to come out. It is actually just it's getting started as well now on the low ground for parting. So we're seeing them both follow that flow. And I think I think that for this game, then it means that mana is the one that's kind of taking the the more responsible. I'm gonna be respectful of what just happened. I recognize that if I try and do something greedy like that into a big push, you are gonna punish me. So goes back towards something that we view as a little bit more tried tried and true for the celestial matchup would you say Bayo? yeah the, the one thing uh, absolutely the, the one thing i'm looking at here is i'm really curious so boneyard is a map that we've gotten by far the best games of this tournament on i mean we had a laser percival game three we had the laser parting on this map it's awesome but the thing that makes this map really interesting and actually it looks like mon is going to try to take advantage of it right now is that there are a couple high ground positions that you don't really get access to all that easily. Getting Argent up onto the high ground doesn't really work out all that well. So you can be greedy with it. You can go and put a Morph Core there, put a Creation Chamber down, and up until the point where there's maybe a, a Star Forge or something, or something that allows you to build flying units, it's very hard to contest. So Mon is taking advantage of that, absolutely. Parting, though, not really. He's just, you know, we talked about macro versus aggression. Parting's just running across the map. He's like, I got Argents, let's party. I mean, he gets a, two power banks potentially quite quickly here. The second one is running low, but he's defended it so far. And we see that energy dip into the red for mana. So it, you, know, you don't, don't want to get caught in a situation where you can't take the proper actions to defend the attack here. And he does manage to get back up into the yellow. He's got the Sovereign's Watch too. And having that position right there in front of everything is, is very nice, right? You're controlling a lot of space. You're, you're telling him if he wants to make any kind of harass or assault, he's going to have to go way around the outside. But that's still a lot of Argents for parting. And he has the vision to see that the unit count is, is still something he could try to take advantage of. But again, those Argents for mana get juiced up. And he knows the energy for him is a little bit lower. Yeah, not only, again, those power banks, massive deal in this game, but also, again, the ability, that spell that the Arc Ship has that goes, and as long as you're not taking damage, heals up Argent's almost back up to full. So it's a massive force multiplier. Yeah, Parting showed up with, like, two more Argents, but if damage on his units was sticking, I mean, he does have the health camp, but half an HP per second is not the, the most relevant thing when we're talking about damage sticking in the fight. If his damage is not sticking, and... Mana's damage is. It's just not a fight that you can easily take. So parting backs up. There's an energy camp. And this is actually super important for Celestials in particular because so many of their units really rely on energy to make their abilities useful. We see the empowered shots from the Argents. Uh, Seraphine move faster when they have power. Scythes do. They take no damage when they have power, when they have energy. It's a super important camp to take. So parting gets that. That's going to empower his fights maybe a little bit more. And Mana... He's greedy boy, right? We, we got we got more money on the way, more Illuminate camps, more expansions. Yeah, that's that's the expectation from him. He's been big on the money this weekend. Lots lots of um, clever. I won't I won't I don't want to be as dismissive as to say greedy, but lots of clever uh, clever greed. The way that he's the way he's employed the economy here and parting is going to clear out the Illuminate camp on the west side. So both of them. We're getting we are getting to that macro kind of power up phase almost is what it feels like even though even though i, I think everybody still kind of has in the back of their mind yeah argents lots of argents still we we are getting to some stable pacing that maybe maybe one or two skirmishes away from from seeing a little bit of tech up here i mean uh i put putting this out here mana is actively he's got a prism on Therium. We are seeing, you know, it's crazy, right? But people are mining more than just Luminite at this point. Mana, and Mana can get away with it, right? Because he has this base on the north side, this collection array on the high ground that Parting is not aware of. He's got his actually fourth base on the way now. So if you're just up that far in Luminite mining on your opponent, what that means is, yeah, you can go and you can send a Prism to go mine some Therium to start to tech up a little bit to maybe get, um, maybe get photo restoration and make your Argents that much faster, make sure them they regenerate that much faster to go into arc station have purify and just and not not tech up a ton but tech up enough yeah and i think that's something that 
would definitely be an interesting twist if we if we if we see what it, what happens here. Right? This is this is the crucible under which under which the players are going to forge the meta of the game. We were in the grand finals. If it's going to be something we haven't seen before, this is where it would pop out. Now, man is kind of pulling Parting's army through the middle of the map. He has a huge Argent squad going through the south side. However, he's going to just target straight down that collection array. Chasing it, there is the liftoff, but I think I think he's got enough firepower here to clear it out, and so he shall as well as a prism. And as the army retreats to clear that out, Bayo, he pushes the south vision tower, and tries to make a push through the blast node, gets one of those, and is taking a little bit of a trade against some choked up Argents and Partings. Yeah, importantly as well, that Purify goes down. I think it's Mana's Purify as well. So he's just getting that much more energy into this fight, which means that, yeah, <laughs> yes, there are power banks there, but he's getting something done. Harding got an Animancer. And I don't know if this is for Dark Prophecy trying to go away. It doesn't matter. It's just going to get sniped down here immediately. But at the very least, Animancers conceptually are really cool into this fight because their basic channel... Yes, they just have an attack that fights, but their basic channel attack, it goes and steals energy and it steals HP from, from your opponent and it gives it to everyone around you. So what that means is you can go and like, again, the most important part about these fights is the energy differential. Can you go and have more energy than your opponent, get more empowered shots than your opponent? And if you have this channeled ability that steals that power from mana and gives it to, to parting, that's actually a really interesting idea. I love this. They were trying to contest to see who would take the first shot on the camp so that the other one could steal it. And then it turns into Dark Prophecy to try to actually force the fight there. And Parting gets a couple of decent shots up. But mana reinforcements arriving now. We see that purification you were talking about coming up once again here. And Parting will be able to retreat. So the collection array was popped. He's tried to move into some higher tech, but is, is mana going to be able to overwhelm him here with just this mass Argent shove? Yeah, I don't know, right? Because, you know, again, we saw how powerful that Dark Prophecy was. Did it kill all the Argents? No, it didn't, but it slowed them down. It denied their concave. It did a lot of damage, which ship damage matters a lot in this context, especially with these, bla with these blast nodes firing away. And is, again, as more Animancers get added into this game, those Dark Prophecies are going to be really good. And this time, it's positioned much better. So unlike those previous fights where Mana was able to go and just snipe down the Animancers and find all that value and just deny the Dark Prophecy, this time... That was a full channel. That was a full Dark Prophecy cast. And Mana, at this point, he's going to have to go back. Back to the drawing board, go maybe macro up a little bit more. But this attack no longer is going to work out. It's really nice. We start to see a little bit of variety in the unit composition. Those Animancers have a clear role. It's a little bit tricky to get them out when the economy scale is all about getting as many Argents as possible. But when you can see a few of them mixed and you can see where that potential comes from and uh, look at the precast on the ramp is just expecting mana to run up the ramp through this so trying to have some sort of zoning going ahead of time gets the clear and will be on the retreat now but of course the other side too is the speed there and okay there you go use the unseen veil just try to get a little bit of uh escape and there i mean how often do we get to see that in celestial mirror yeah, Party actually uses this really uh no, we actually saw Mana use this really nicely as well in that semifinals. It's like, God, these prophecies are starting to really cause some problems, but also it's a nice concave, and there's not a lot of Argents here. But again, also, because that arc station went down, the Purify is available for Parting. It is not for Mana. Even as we say that, even as everything is happening, Mana Filthy. almost pushes through, but man, that slow, that prophecy, Purify on top, Parting having energy that Mana does not have. He's at the end of the day, Mana has to back up, play under his own static defense. But again, at this point, with those arc ships being gone, I mean, Mana's making a couple more, but they're not there yet. And certainly, any sort of arc station is way far away. The Animancers have been absolutely filthy in these fights, too. You can really see the, the pacing, as the, even as they run out of energy, the damage on all of those ones trying to approach. One of them gets fried on the outside, but... He's, he's done some really good start it up, cancel it, step back, the energy juggling, he's not leaving them exposed, and the way that he's swinging these fights, even with these full energy uh, Argents coming up for mana, it still just hasn't been enough to overcome the AoE that he's been able to work in, which, and we talk about it's difficult to squeeze out other units, the Argent is really strong, but there, there are a couple of uh, ways that we're seeing through this game right here that you can really reduce the effectiveness of just massing and pushing with them. Goes for the focus on the collection array, now, I think that's that channel you were talking about. So just siphoning out on the Argent to fuel up the rest. And that's a cleared out base for uh, for parting. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. So we saw this Boneyard map. Game number two, again, Mana is dead here. He's going to hold on a little bit longer because, you know, maybe there's a comeback. This is the Grand Finals, but he's dead here. Make no mistake about it. 
but it's interesting because we saw two players playing pretty greedy parting in fact was down on two bases for a little bit but the moment he realized that this map was not going to be pure argent spam versus pure argent spam he actually starts mining a ton of ethereum he goes drops ethereum purifier on that uh the ethereum node on the left side starts to get a lot of that and instead of just saying okay well i'm gonna mine just enough to get an arc station i'm gonna mine and just i'm sorry not even ethereum purifier puts his arc station there uh i'm not gonna do just enough for photo restoration and ethereum purifier i'm gonna get up to animancers and that splash damage that slow yeah you're not mining as much illuminate but <laughs> these animancers are such force multipliers that mana was again he took the wrong greedy path it looks like in this game number two and again best of seven eight we have more opportunities. Mana has been very good at developing into these series. But as of right now, Parting's idea about how he wants to play this seems to be that much better. Yeah, the, the, to me, the most interesting part about this is that you have to wonder on some level if Mana sees this and he thinks to himself, that's, that's oh. within their wheelhouse to, to be like that. But Parting has, you know, Parting is almost too damn responsible. Uh, Bale, that's what I'm going to say. He's he's not doing he's not going as, as unhinged or off the rails. He's he's really focused. I feel like that's the energy he's giving off here. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, again, this is a grand finals here. Uh, it, this is you know this is not a hundred thousand dollar tournament, but the prize pool. You know, we're a two thousand dollar tournament plus whatever people have gone and donated on into Match Reno. I haven't had a chance to check today, but you know it's growing a little bit. So yeah, <laughs> we're gonna lock into this grand finals. You do make sure you do want to win. Um, the one thing I'm paying attention to on top of everything else, and yeah, it's not gonna happen on this map. But do we have, we've seen some like one base scythe ideas in this matchup. Now, again, I think Isla Dread with the speed camp as accessible as it is, is gonna be very hard to pull that off. Multiple ac access points to go in snipe collection arrays with Argent's probably not this map. But do we see a map where this Argent opening is something that changes around a little bit? Or was that just something where it's like, ah, this is the NA meta and, and uh, you know, the Europeans and the Koreans, they have a better idea about how to play this game. Uh, it, it is a good question. With how open it is, I think about how how all of those fights happened around the chokes, and especially you know where the Animancer kind of gains that efficiency fighting around the Vision camps and the choke points. There, obviously, Dark Prophecy is going to be great, but Isle of Dread is pretty open. And at at some point down the line, I, as you mentioned, the speed camp is a big change up now, so that mobility becomes even much more of an issue. I feel like we'll probably see more more argents just just without the without the choke points to increase the value of the aoe i don't know where else they go but i hope to see i hope to see a mix up either way yeah again i, I think the, the fun thing about this right so again stormgate we talked about it a lot but still worth pointing out stormgate is a month out into early access and yeah there have been different play tests but every single time there's a new build tons of things change and in fact well we've had two balance patches since that early access started and things change dramatically after every single balance patch as well so this is a game that is very very new these styles these strategies these players you know uh, they got a couple hundred games on ladder on the current patch they got you know maybe a couple hundred hours in the game but this is not something that's been around for 14 years we're seeing metas develop we're seeing players learn how to play against each other play in these longer extended series as they continue so uh, yeah i'm with you nate maybe not maybe not on this map maybe the speed camp is too strong but i think we will see more but for now, <laughs> speed camp yeah. into health camp. And actually, I think this is really interesting. Look at what Parting is doing here. His arc station or his arc ship is so far forward. That's going to enable the morph core to go forward. And I think, well, this just unlocks a lot of aggression, right? Creation chambers likely are going to go down. And well, then things get hot, get, get spicy. There's the creation chamber right outside the West Luminite Tower. And he clears that up. And I, I agree with you, too. It's it's fascinating to see that volatility, the meta of the game completely changing. There was the first public test uh, for Stormgate way back in February. Celestial wasn't even in the game. We had, people still thought it might be anime cat girls for all they knew. So the, the, the speed at which things change and then, then we end up seeing them and it's like, oh, they have lasers. Are they like this? No, 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 no. Their whole base just moves around. It's kind of more like a like a crawling jungler, really, than a than an RTS like base that sits there. You go around, you you leave things at key areas for objectives, and you kind of control space with everything. And it's been fun to watch. Seeing how a mirror matchup of that plays out has been crazy. Um, but I'm not I'm not surprised we see it at, at this kind of stage though, because it's people figuring out something that's never really existed before. Man, look at how they're splitting the map, by the way. So Parting's got like the left side of the middle and Mana's got the right side of the middle. And you know who wins? I don't know. But it seems like for now, Parting 
does have a little bit of first movers advantage, right? He's got these Argents on the other side. They're not actually doing anything just yet, but he has pull position on that natural of mana. And uh, more importantly, this is a double collection array out of mana. So Parting's able to snipe both of these. That is a problem. And Mana is, again, woefully out of position. He's going to get on top of the power battery. He's going to go and start to knock down some of the production, maybe. But if Mana loses both creation or both collection arrays here, his economy, uh, he has to get something done here. His economy is going to be in the Stone Age. Yeah, gutted by about 66%, right? Losing that. Now, Mana is going for the same trade on the other side. Sovereign's Watch was popped on it, so he's taking out a collection array. He does have a rather large number of Argents, so I think the other one he's going to be able to focus down as well, so it's just a it's a brutal the base trade-esque type situation. We've we've traded at the majority of each other's economies. We are inside of each other's bases with, with a pretty substantial amount of forces. Mana seems to have a couple more Argents uh, in, in terms of being right in his face, but the energy is still up there for parting. He's trying to play around the speed camp boost to avoid him. And I, I, I don't know what you make of this, but parting is also on top of the last, uh, is that the last collection array for mana now in the bottom left? Yeah, so. That is, so, mm. man, I, parting, I, I forget who he was playing. Uh, parting played a game on this map a couple weeks ago on Isle of Dread, right? Where he was playing Infernal Infernal and he had every single collection array sniped. It's like, okay, he's dead. But he took enough on the vision, uh, off the different camps on the map that gave him enough money to go and build another collection array. And he was able to get another one up and it took him like 10 minutes, but he was able to actually go and come back into this game. So Mana, he, again, he's lost all his collection arrays. He does have some prisms available. And he, by the way, he's gonna be able to snipe theoretically parting. Parting was very quick on folding this uh, collection array up. I don't think it matters. I think it's still dead. Uh, oh, okay, drops the scan. Okay, we're good. And now there's no income. <laughs> I don't know that we're able to mine all that much. And that means that parting, the fact that he's up 15 oh, no. supply is such a big deal. Actually, oh, no, no, he does have income. Okay, actually, there is a creation chamber on that middle map base. And that is something that Mana does not have. Bayo, I, when I hear words like no income, I, I have to ask you a question. I know, you've, I know you've played a lot more Celestial than I have. I can guarantee that. So I, I have to ask you. Is is the corner of the map unreachable by air on this map? And does the arc ship count for the elimination? Is this is this is this uh, can Celestial turn into like a draw situation here without the collection array or does the oh, arc? I actually don't know. I have not played a lot okay. of Celestial either. <laughs> um, but what I will tell you is these towers count as buildings. These towers count as buildings for a base trade. Okay. So I have lost a game. I've lost games or I lost once because I didn't know about this where I killed his his structures and he killed mine. But I, I killed his structures first. I'm like, great, I won the game. And then he capped my last camp. And, and, and or no, sorry, I didn't cap his camp. He had one camp remaining. He killed my last structure after I killed all of his and I lost the game. So, you know, that's probably not gonna happen in this game. Okay. But, you know, <laughs> there is that okay. as well. <laughs> I hate, we're uncharted waters, right? Or slightly charted, maybe, maybe charted once. Not sure if result is repeatable, but Harding is just going to collapse on top of Mana's army. He's going to chew it all up. He's not in the corner of the map hiding. It, everything is is not uh, not quite not quite as insane as I made it seem like it could be. But we have this fight, and I, I think with what Parting has, yeah, there's there's not not too much he can really do to shut this down anymore. Yeah, I think the other thing we talk about, oh, might this go to a draw? Can you float the arc ship into the corner? Not really, right? Because if you win the ground battle, is Parting wins this game, goes up three zero in the finals. If you it's win the fourth game. What do you want to see out of Mana? How does he adapt? How does he respond? Oh, I I have absolutely no idea. It's it's a it's a really really tricky. What I what I want what I when I when I close my eyes and I and I make a wish for this match, Bayo, I see I see a little bit of that Boneyard game, and I feel like I feel like that has been the energy for a lot of this tournament. Has been that Boneyard gives us these wild games and. This one is a little still more on the traditional side, but that rush distance also, you know, a factor as well. And I seeing the Animancers come into play, seeing a little bit of that control, the back and forth, that that does get me excited. I, I, I assume that we'll probably have a lot of Argents made in this game. So I guess what I'd like to see then is for them to just push each other to the limit and man it maybe squeeze one out, keep us keep us going a little bit here, but uh Maybe, maybe force parting to do something a little different down the line? Yeah, it's interesting. We talked about Secluded Grove as well, and that is conceptually a map that is very strong. Very strong for, I mean, this is a Celestial Mirror, but very strong for Celestials, right? Because you just float over, float over the Secluded Grove, drop a bunch of collection arrays everywhere, and just start to mine a ton, get double Therium if you need to. 
but also again celestial mirror so it's not like you really need a ton of therium super early it's not like you have flying advantage over your opponent but what's also kind of cool again so we have these setups mana's playing more towards the middle really i guess focusing on the vision camp above everything else and parting well again the healing camp is probably the most important uh on this map again there's no speed camp so getting that little bit of extra hp regen can be really solid as it stands though we had sovereign's watch absolutely we do have that collection array a little bit further south of him but there's no production out of parting right now i don't see a single creation chamber on the map he's gonna try to take this base down eventually with morph cores but he's a greedy greedy boy into this game number four yeah, I, and it's hey, I, I when I look at the mini map and it doesn't look like they're both doing the exact same thing. That that is what gets my blood pumping a little bit more. So mana setting up his position in the center of the map, and you know you're talking about going over the secluded grove. Of course, those those resources are all right there. Now what's really interesting is so parting. Expand, he puts his infrastructure on the west side of the trees from that south base that he's set up at, and he's more or less just left the collection array in the starting position in the starting natural, but. He's on he's on three arrays and he is positioning himself to go for that center base right next to Mana's base. You know, if we think Mana's the greedy player and Parting's the aggressive player, you might as well look. Parting can afford to do something weird in this game. He's up three to zero. He's looked very, very good. He's talking about production in the center. Well, that again, you have this safe third base. He's yeah, he's on four collection arrays now. You have this safe third base that's kind of hard to put pressure on, but you still have these creation chambers in the center. And what that means is that you're able to go and again you're able to actually have production on the map and contest the rest of the map while your mining is safe now how does mana respond to this he's on what is he on two creation chamber or two collection arrays right now i think thinking about not even getting a third one parting can if right now mana has a big supply lead he's building more origins he's his economy is not as strong which means he can build more stuff you give parting like two minutes you give him three minutes you let all this production start to get ready and parting is going to outgrow mana in the ex <laughs> he's opening up the center but parting's already taken it what is this they basically both built their bases right next to each other for the same thing and what's fascinating too is over a long trade in this position you there's no heal camp for mana. So we're fighting with a lot of the same units. And if the unit counts remain similar, Parting's a little choked up. I think he's uh, maybe dropped one or two more here so far, but the just having that bit of extra sustain over time for the trade could end up working out well for Parting too. Keep in mind, once that economy kicks in, four collection arrays, like you mentioned, is absolutely nothing to scoff at. Continuing to pull back here and have that arc ship up front, trying to give that heal you were discussing earlier. And another power bank booting here. This is... Okay, is, is this peak celestial versus celestial right now? Is that what I'm getting here, Bayo? You know, this you may not you may not like it, but this is absolutely what peak celestial versus celestial <laughs> looks like. And again, we look at the setup, and right now Mon is up 11 supply. Like, okay, Mon is in a great spot. You have to remember, Parting has four bases. He is mining so much more, and this gap is already closing. It was 11, now it's nine. He's going to build more creation chambers. He's going to be able to build more of these power banks, and eventually eventually he's going to be able to go and there, there we go seven he's eventually going to be able to go and out macro this he's not trying to win the game with some massive fight right now he's just trying to make sure his trades are at the most even because the money is so much better and the trades are even better than even right now he's totally reset the supply at this point more argents are going to show up mana has been absolutely bamboozled in this game number four we talked about understandings of celestial macro and maybe that's something that mana has better but this matchup right now nate is something that parting is dominating this is we had some close games but this one is not even close parting is demonstrating just a just a mastery and an understanding that i feel like we're just we're not even I mean, we're just not on that level yet he he understood how to make things happen that we didn't think could happen and every situation that's presented itself no matter how clever mana has played to overcome a lot quite a bit of adversity in this tournament through all the different struggles and very close matches on the way here Parting, parting just did not have that difficulty <laughs> at all. Man says, hello, your Argents are bet. I mean, they are <laughs> healing for like half a health per second over time versus yours. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll leave that. I'll leave that there. Uh, Mana, ever the showman here. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. So everything's going to go down here. Mana just, you know, saving the last couple seconds of this game. GG, congratulations.